Today, my guest is Professor Dr. Paula Brown from Osage Beach, Missouri. I'm Rick Jay, your host, and this is Mid-Missouri Art News. <laughs> Welcome to JCTV Mid-Missouri Art News, supported by many enthusiasts now worldwide, thanks to YouTube. We're coming to you from the capital city of Missouri. Uh, that's Jefferson City. I'm your host, Rick J. And if you would, please welcome with me uh, Dr. Paula Brown, who has a lot to offer. Welcome to the show, thank you, uh, Dr. Brown. Rick, thank you. Well, if you uh, would, please, we like to, uh, the viewers love to get to know a person. So, if you would um, tell us a little bit about uh, Professor Dr. Paula Brown. <laughs> well, I um, grew up uh, first in Kansas City, and uh, when I was about eight, my parents divorced and my mother uh, moved us to a little town. So I grew up in a little town near Clinton, Missouri, and the name of it's Lowry City. Lowry City. And uh, she raised four children, uh, pretty much alone. And uh, she's probably my inspiration behind a lot of things I do. She uh, worked to put herself through college and raise four children and uh, went on to be an educator and a uh, counselor and a superintendent. Um, but with that, she uh, inspired in, uh, the, her four children to, uh, an education was important, and to move forward with that. But I think as a little girl, I spent a lot of time out in nature, and drawing, and painting, and uh, so all of those different experiences kind of built who I am today. I see. Now I can connect with you to bring up some personal. I know Larry City well. I was born at Collins. Oh my goodness. And Browns do, there are Browns in our family, so we may be connected. <laughs> uh, not knowing it until this time, but yes, a Collins boy here in Larry City. Oh my goodness. Osceola, Missouri. Uh, yes. 13 miles from there. Yes. So, oh, that's great. That's where all my family is. I see. Osceola, Larry City. Oh, yes. Well, then I will have to talk about that. <laughs> but it's so good. I've been looking forward to visiting with you here at the round table for a few months now. I first met you uh, at uh, the uh, Sedalia Visual Arts Association yes. uh, meeting where you presented uh, your, uh, your past somewhat and, and uh, stepped into your art. Now, you've been recognized recently uh, with your uh, education academics. Can you tell us a little bit um, about uh, your foundation that you've built and, and what it uh, basically reels now, reveals now after so many years of hard work, I'm sure? Well, I, uh, when I graduated from high school, I wanted to go to college. I couldn't wait. And so I went to the University of Missouri, and um, um, so I worked and I received a uh, I have a bachelor's of art education, and um, my mother really pushed the education part and, mm. uh, and science. I really love science. So anyway, as soon as I got out of uh, college, I got a, a teaching position in Camdenton, uh, Missouri, at Camdenton High School. I see. And um, so I was the art instructor there in the high school for 11 years. Wow. And as I... Uh, became very interested in the students and what they were doing. They moved me into a counseling position. I didn't want to be a counselor. I wanted to stay in, in art, but I was a counselor. Then I was director of guidance. And when I was working with children, I, uh, I guess I'm very passionate about their care. 
And so I started writing grants, and I built an alternative school called Horizons ah. uh, with grants. And my principal then was probably my mentor, uh, R.C. Worthen. Uh -huh. And um, so from there, he pushed me to uh, finish my degree um, as a principal. So I became a principal, high school principal, and um, so was his assistant, and then uh, uh, then a principal for. Uh, and I was there 33 years in the high school, and then as um, and I built several programs. Uh, sure. So the Horizons for the the children who had that need, who uh, weren't didn't meet the norms, and then I created the International Baccalaureate program for gifted children. Oh, excellent! Uh -huh. um, then A plus, and just several programs uh, for for students, and. Uh, so I wanted to retire after 33 years because my son was a senior, or my youngest son was, and uh, they asked me to take over a middle school, so I was principal there for three years, and uh, during that time I built what was called areas of career interest. So the community uh, got hold of all that information because um, when I retired then I started the gallery, and with that I teach one of the aspects of it is that I teach um, stroke victims who have gone through strokes how to draw and use their fine motor skills, connect their brain back to their fine motor sure. skills. Uh -huh. And I also have about 54 art students. Wow. So, and when I started the gallery, I just wanted a studio, but it became bigger than that. So my, the education part of me, uh, and I'm still a professor, you know, that teaches education classes, but, um, it all combined to where it became an academy. So the art gallery now is an academy and a gallery and my studio. <laughs> oh, great, yes. So, and she represents a lot of fine artists, which we're going to talk more about uh, uh, after the break in a, in a few moments. The gallery is at Osage Beach. Mm -hmm. And yes. so uh, if you uh, uh, have not been to Osage Beach, uh, to the gallery, go. Well, and uh, definitely uh, hope you'll pay a visit. Uh, so you have talked, we've talked, well, uh, we've talked about how art is used therapeutically with many guests, not only as an individual, but helping others. Yes. Uh, you're talking about re basically retraining the brain for uh, victims. Uh, we've had different ones, uh, car wrecks, uh, strokes, that have used it naturally on a personal basis. But it, it's really great how art can reach so many people in uh, so many ways uh, and connect yes. or let them reconnect or connect with mm -hmm. others, uh, communicate with others, what have you. So uh, I, 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 I can see that with your foundation that it was almost uh, uh, automatic that you would start developing and tying the education and art together. So uh, uh, Dr. Brown is more than just an artist and we're going to talk a lot more about her art and the gallery as I said a few moments ago. Uh, so your inspiration basically uh, was with mother uh, for your art and education what have you uh, but then you, I would guess that your inspiration now comes from those students. Yes, um, well, over the years, I was um, taught art for only 11 of those years, but uh, at night, when I got home from the ball games, the football games, the basketball games, whatever the activities were, um, I could put myself to sleep. I could calm down by painting. So I always had a painting going. Yes. In, uh, you know, in the, my, my studio. So when I got home at night, I would paint, and then I could sleep. And so I've always continued my own art, art uh, and been able to kind of develop, you know, who am I and what's my style? Because when you teach, you can teach any style. Sure. Or you have to teach every style. So when you, uh, many teachers, art teachers, have to stop and figure out who am I? 
Exactly. And uh -huh. so uh, that's a process. And so I was able to develop that over the years. And uh, my first love is the art because, um, as you've said to me several times, is that you can lose yourself um, and just relax and let everything go during the day. And, um, you know, as an assistant principal, your days are filled in as a principal. So you, um, it's hard to just let down and relax. Exactly. And, um, and I have four children of my own, right, and, I uh, which I love dearly and I'm very proud of. Uh, and uh, so my husband and I have been busy raising children and everything else. So um, I had to find somewhere to stick in my love for art. So it was always at night when they went to sleep. <laughs> yes, I know. I, I, I do the same. Art is so relaxing. Uh, and uh, if you have a busy life, art is definitely an out. Uh, so I can identify. I'm sure a lot of others can, I can too. Mm -hmm. The, um, uh, what is your, you know, we're going to be showing some, uh, quite a few pieces uh, to represent uh, your art. What is your favorite, uh, uh, shall we say, uh, media? Well, a lot of people ask me that, and that's, that's hard because I teach every medium, but I guess my preference would be oil. Um, however, I do a lot of acrylics because I can get them done quickly. But I paint an acrylic just like I do in oil. Um, but I teach watercolor, acrylic, oil, drawing. Uh, I do a lot of Conti drawings. Um, so I, I guess oil and acrylic would be my two favorite. Um, I really enjoy them and I, I just got through working on a painting last night and um, I have a lot of commissions right now, so I have a lot of paintings oh, stacked oh. up that people want done. Right. <laughs> so, uh, so I have to also balance that between what people want of me and what I want to do. And so that's a hard balance because um, the more people get to know you, the more they want you. Could you paint this, please? Or could you yes. do this? Please, so I have to balance that. <laughs> and your art represents you so well. That's awesome, and uh, we'll see as we uh, chat, we'll see some of those artists promised a, a couple of minutes ago. Uh, well, uh, Dr. Brown, we've got to take a break, so uh, please stay with me, relax, and uh, we'll be right back. When we um, return, we will be uh, taking a, a deeper look into uh, Dr. Brown's uh, completion of a project, where it begins, where she comes up with her ideas, um, her own style uh, of painting. And we'll talk about some of her favorites that we're going to share with you. So stay with me. We'll be right back. Talking to your kids about finishing school isn't easy, just necessary. Call 866 Estudia or go to boostup.org for materials that can help. Welcome back to Mid Missouri Art News. Join me now as we continue our discussion with multi talented Dr. Paula Brown from Osage Beach, Missouri. Well, Dr. Brown, you shared so much in the first segment. And I've surely gained the viewer's attention at this point here on this Missouri Art News. So your life story is one of a kind that we want to learn more about. So I'd like to start off by, um, please first explain your favorite type of artwork to our viewers. Um, we want to mention maybe your children. Would you like to say hello to them before we get started? Yes, I, I have, um, uh, my husband is Steve Brown and my uh, child. I have two boys and a girl, but uh, Derek, uh, Jessica, and Zachary Brown, and uh, then I raised a stepson, Matthew Brown. So, uh, but they're all uh, wonderful, and I have, uh, in January, I'll have eight grandchildren, and, wow. <laughs> and uh, twins are due in January. 
So. Oh my! Congratulations! Thank on you. They keep a, me busy. Oh, I bet. <laughs> Great twins. Uh, twins are in our family also, so yes. I can. You know, it's always special, but all children are special. So, yes. And I, I know you've got to spoil them to death. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Even the grown ones, because they yeah. need a little spoiling once in a while. <laughs> well, okay, let's go ahead then and, and kind of pick apart um, your art, personal art, as we'll be throwing onto the timeline as we talk about them. Uh, what is your favorite type of artwork? Um, should we say uh, subject matter? Well, I, my favorite artwork is when I can represent um, who I am and what, like my past, or um, paint the places from my past, or if I can tell a story in my yes. paintings. And I love to be able to uh, tell the story of who I am or where I'm coming from. Or even if it's about someone else, like right now I'm painting a series about World War II veterans because I work with them. That's one of the reasons I was put into the magazine is, uh, too, is I, um, I work with World War II veterans and I put on a giant Veterans Day show. Well, this just came out. This is LO Profile magazine. And um, they just did a cover uh, story and I'm right here and it, it's very interesting it's called the ambassadors of hope uh -huh. um, series and they they had nominations for people in the community that uh, inspired hope in others yes. and so uh -huh. I I don't know who the nominations were all from but it probably was people that I worked with with Veterans Day and the stroke victims and art students and and the school system so but I was very um, honored to be a part of that and they did a, a full page uh, and they picked words to uh, organize this and mine was scholar. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, congratulations. Thank you. That's really a notable and uh, it definitely uh, it closes a little bit of your a chapter in your life of all the hard work that you put into uh, well, okay. something I did not, uh, you know, it was such an honor because I had no idea and it was such a surprise and just very honored by the people that surround me. Oh, great. Well, that is that is a, a, a really awesome. Um, so back to your type of art, uh, it's from your heart, as we always say, and uh, you have certain pieces. Are there certain pieces that we can uh, share with the viewers today? That you'd like to uh, yes, I can show some work uh, artwork that uh, that I've done recently and in the past. Uh, and, and to the by name, uh, can you describe those for the timeline? Well, I uh, I have one that is um, by thy roots, and it's a it's a it simply is a tree with a swing in it. But it was a place that I uh, climbed that tree and was in that swing and while. My grandfather would plow the fields. I would just daydream, get up there and daydream about who I would be in the future or what I wanted to be. And because uh, oh. I grew up in those fields and on those far in that farm area, and uh, uh, so I felt like the strength that was given me was by my, you know, ancestors and by my yes. family. And right. so the name of that painting is "By Thy Roots." Um, and then I have several paintings that. Um, where I have found uh, like antique pictures of the past and I have drawn them uh, because our history is fading away now. We all have our pictures on our phones and so I found and these pictures and then I draw them up and I name them after uh, whatever's written on the back. And uh, so I would like to do a show called uh, Moments in Time. Excellent. So I have several oh, of them yes. with That's me That's a great theme. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so uh, those things sound special, and we'll definitely share them with the viewers. Now, um, you exhibit many art forms at your gallery, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, Lake Fine Art Museum and Galleria there at Osage Beach. I know I have uh, uh, had on the show quite a few that do show in your gallery, mm -hmm. Chester Lux. Yes. Uh, the... Uh, gentleman, lady, does the 
wood carvings with the chainsaw. Nick Barrow. Nick mm -hmm. Barrow. And I'm sure you'd like to... Dave uh, Carter. Dave Carter, the um, uh, uh, Mills of Missouri, and, and more. So go ahead and uh, talk about some of those favorite pieces. I'm sure every piece means something to you uh, in the gallery, but uh, if you'd like to point out certain ones, we'll be uh, uh, definitely able to share those too. Yes, I have uh, 64 artists in the gallery, mm -hmm. and um, and the artwork moves in and out quickly. So, and uh, with COVID, my worry was, you know, would the gallery survive? Yes. And since, because uh, we were shut down for six weeks, and when they opened back up, the lake area has boomed. <laughs> uh, people are coming from everywhere moving in and buying homes and remodeling their homes and buying artwork. Excellent. So the gallery has done very well. Uh, with that being said, the artwork is changing rapidly, so I've had to do an all call to artists, please bring ah. in the artwork, because I've had to refill and refill and refill. So it's been a nice problem to have. Yes. But uh, with that being said, I have so many uh, excellent artists in there, but my gallery is eclectic, meaning I find uh, art in a lot of things like wood, glass, um, pottery, stained glass, um, and then of course the oils, the acrylics. But you can find almost any type of artwork in the gallery. Uh, one lady, uh, Colette Moore, uh, artwork is with uh, the caps of, of uh, beer bottles. Oh, <laughs> and she nice. does uh, beautiful pieces of dogs and horses and, and scenes with these. Uh, so it's, it's a different kind of art form. But, you know, uh, we've talked about Dave Carter and, and uh, Chester Lux. But I have a new lady in there, Cynthia Morris who is extraordinary, and I don't know if she's been on your show. She's from Warsaw, originally from Sedalia, and she is simply color pencil artist. Oh, I and see. And they're, they're super real. There's, uh, you know, just super realism. And you would never dream they were done with a color pencil, but oh, she's see. very remarkable. And then I have Lee Copen, who is from um, Webster Grove, and she is a beautiful watercolorist. Um, Nancy Gray, Carol Anderson are watercolorists. And then um, my biggest uh, sell right now, artist who's selling, is Gary St. Ivany. Oh, and Gary St. Ivany is an abstract artist, but he um, has selling paintings uh, like crazy. And I'll tell you why, I think. A lot of the homes now are being painted uh, light gray. Oh. And the artwork is their pop of color, sure. and a lot, and they want big paintings, and a lot of them want abstract. Excellent. Now I sell all kinds, but he has sold the most. Well, let, let, uh, tell our viewers where it's at, address, uh, contact information, if you would. Okay, um, it's Lake Fine Art Academy and Galleria. It's at five five one three Osage Beach Parkway in Osage Beach, Missouri. And if you uh, know the area, we're on, I'm on the, uh, the west side of the old parkway, the uh, Grand Glazed Bridge. So I'm on the west side and it's the old parkway. And uh, I'm it's, right in. It's not far from what the landmark, is the landmark uh, shopping area there? Um, it would be Blair's Landing or Blair's Blair Street. Landing. Yes, yes, it's Blair's not far Landing. from there. It's by the hospital. It's right yes. beside the Osage Beach Post Office. Oh yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. So okay, it's um, right. but it's very, um, it's in a little strip. I mean, there's kind of the Lakeshore Plaza strip mall, and I'm right in there. Well, now uh, you've accepted my invitation to the 2021 Call for Nature's Art that uh, I'll be. Um, uh, holding uh, at the Runge Conservation Nature Center here in Jefferson City. Uh, it was scheduled for 2020, but now it's scheduled once again for 2021, uh, the months of May and June. So um, uh, Dr. Brown has been invited to bring a piece that uh, 
she feels will represent nature conservation in Missouri. And I thank you for the uh, um, acceptance. We look forward thank to it. Thank you. Um, now, do you have, um, you're, you're doing commissions, so do you have a contact information um, that you'd like to share as far as uh, email, uh, yes. Facebook, um, what have you? <laughs> well, my, um, my email uh, would be uh, pbrown58 at charter.net, and that would be the easiest way to, uh, to find me. Uh, also, my web page uh, has just been renewed, and it's www.lakefineart.net. And um, so we're excited about that because it will have all the artists' names on them, and we're trying to get it to where when you click on their names, you see their artwork. Well, not to pin you down, but if a person, if an artist wanted though, to contact you, exhibit their artwork, what would be the procedure to follow then? They would need to call me at 573-480-1887 and uh, schedule a time to come in because I do teach every day. Uh, I'm closed on Sundays and Mondays, but I'm open Tuesday through Saturday. Um, and I open at 10, 10 and I close at 5, except on Saturday I close at 3. And uh, so we would need to schedule a time because I have lots of classes I teach during that time. I see. Well, I'm going to ask another tough question because every artist seems to think that they're never good enough to, uh, should we say, exhibit their artwork. Mm -hmm. So do you have a criteria that would maybe inspire or what, what do you look for? Uh, well, it's, you... I, I'm, I'm very picky about what goes in the gallery, but we have a personal meeting and um, and as I look through their portfolio, I simply choose what I'd like to be in the gallery, but I also try to build them up with critiques and how they could be better because sometimes people come to me, uh, they're trying to get out there, but they're more amateur. Yes. And so I talk to them about you know ways to to help build their style and try to form a style. But what I look for for my gallery is that an artist needs a style yes. that they can be identified by. And if they don't have a style yet, then they need to develop one or start working towards that. And um, so if I can't find a style, I'm searching for that. And so that would be the criteria that I'm looking for. Hello, I would like to show you something special. Um, I work with stroke victims at the hospital and monthly I go in and create a two hour painting. And with those two hour paintings, uh, they're different every month. Um, I teach them for two, two and a half hours to paint the same painting. So what I've noticed with doing this, it's therapeutic, and uh, the main attraction to it is that it attaches uh, brain waves to the fine motor skills in their hands. And so the stroke victims have become stronger, and they're painting beautiful paintings. So the fall themes that we've come up with have been the pumpkins, uh, 
a scarecrow. And uh, these are examples of some of the fall themes. I, I paint them the night before in two hours. And then we paint them the next day uh, for two, two and a half hours. And it's amazing what happens and uh, very proud of their work. Well, Dr. Brown, we're just about out of time. So on behalf of JCTV, I want to thank you so much for contributing uh, to Mid-Missouri Art News, making it a learning and educational experience uh, for all. Do you have any closing words for our viewers? Uh, no, I just appreciate that you've given me the opportunity to, um, to show off the gallery and, and to um, tell people that I'm there and that I have a venue for artists to show. Well, thank you once again. And uh, I want to say thanks to our, uh, Mr. Art Gerhardt for uh, assisting today, directing and running the controls, shall we say. And uh, our, the producer, station manager, Gloria Enlow. Uh, it takes a, a great effort to keep things going. And naturally, I have to thank you, the viewers, worldwide now. Thanks to YouTube. So I invite you to keep watching and look for more. Mid-Missouri Art News, and Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Rick J., your host, saying tune in next time. We'll see you. There's a lot more here at JCTV. Thank you. Mm -hmm.